So we will be listening to the Pyre soundtrack while we go through our rankings of all the characters of Pyre. Um, I found a pre-created uh, tier list here. I think everybody's on it. I, I checked it a little bit and it seemed like everyone was there. So I think we'll be all right. Um, if not, I will I'll make my, uh, my thoughts known some other way. So we've got some good background music. I've got the wiki here in case we need it. Um, but other than that, I'm, I'm feeling ready. I'm feeling good. If anything, like I'm, I'm worried it's not going to be interesting enough because all these characters are so damn good. But I'll do my best to give good reasonings. Uh, and then I'll do like the rankings with any ranking. So like if I put a bunch of people in S or A or whatever, um, I'll make sure that within those rankings they are ranked from best to worst as well so it should be a comprehensive uh super good list so i think we're good to go i'm feeling all right uh, let me get some water because this bitch be thirsty all right so first is almer almer is pretty sweet um good relationship with his dad big fan of big fan of that dynamic as anyone who actually turned into the stream uh would know uh Good brother, uh, good father-son relations is a bit of a uh, sensitive topic for me sometimes. Uh, sensitive in a good way. It's something that I really care about, and I think Almer is actually an excellent son. Um, he cares about his father a lot, willing to go into exile with him. Um, he cares about the family traditions um, because those are important to his father. Um, fights for him, um, and. I guess there will be some spoilers for our playthrough in here, so if you're coming in completely green, uh, be prepared for spoilers from my stream uh, and whatever story things come with that. Uh, obviously, some story bits are going to be different depending on how you play, um, but in our story, we let Almer and um, Delbert, his father, or his adopted father, um, let them win their liberation right, which meant that uh, Dalbert the dog, let his son go free instead. And the fact that that was so tough for both of them and Elmer didn't want to leave his dad, um, that they thought they were going to go free together at some point. Uh, really tragic, really melancholy. Um, so I think that puts Elmer in S rank. Um, and I guess I can put Dalbert in there too. He's, he's a damn good pup, damn good dad. Um, willing to do anything for his son, make sure his son goes free first. He cares more about his his adoptive son than he does um, himself. Uh, that's not something you necessarily see from biological fathers, so the fact that it also happens within an adoptive family relationship is really special and really, really sweet. Um, so they're both us. Barker. Um, I love Barker a lot. Um, at first, I just liked his design, and it was fun giving him a funny voice. Um, but reading about his backstory a little bit, um, you know, he comes off at first as just like an anarchistic, like, troublemaker, which is fun, but not super deep. Um, but then you learn that why he's in exile is because he pissed on a statue of one of the uh, archjustices that Smash, oh yeah, after yeah, after well done, we'll do Smasher Pass, absolutely. Good to see you, Mama. Uh, that he pissed on a statue of one of the Arch Justices who was one of the first to do like the uh, ban, on a ban on literacy, the book stuff, uh, and that just popped him right up to the top of my list. Uh, anarchy is fun, I like rules. Um, so, you know, sometimes anarchy and I don't entirely go hand in hand, but if you're fucking the system to mess with somebody who's an absolute terror and a menace and a fascist asshole, uh, that's S to me. You're using a piss for good. Uh, and I appreciate that from, from, uh, Barker. Bertrude. Um, Bertrude is pretty cool. Um, she's been in the downside for a while. Um, has an, a good relationship with Volfred. Um, very good at alchemy, uh, very smart, very knowledgeable, good business person. She's been handling herself in the downside pretty well for a long time. Um, and uh, 
she's got a she's got a, a an interesting sense of humor, um, and I wish we could see a little bit more of her. She get she arrives pretty late, so we don't get nearly as much time with Bertrude, uh, but I do really really like her. In the rights, she's really fun to play as because she's got her big slithers and she's really fast and she's got a good jump, um, and her cast is pretty good. Um, but I feel like we needed a little bit more. Uh, a lot of her character is tied directly to Volfrid. So we don't, f I don't feel like we get a lot of her as an individual, um, which makes her slightly weaker. I still like her a lot, um, but slightly weaker. I'm going to put her in A for now. I'm going to put her in A for now. Uh, Celeste, I don't think I have to say this. Uh, is there a better shot of her? Okay, this one's better. I'm going to use this one. Uh, Celeste, she hot. She freaking hot. She looks like an angel. Um, and I love her. She's a musician, so she's artsy. She's got a good soul. Um, and I think she's like called from the, she's called from the scribes. She's got some connection to them. Um, I wish there was more information on her and maybe there is in like another playthrough. Maybe there's something you can do to get more information out of her. Um, but I wish we could learn more about her and Tariq and their particular relationship um, because they are kind of enigmas. They are kind of mysteries. Um, and that's fun, but I want, I do want more. And, and I think that's, that's a good character. Same with Bertrude. Like I, I know I put her in A, which is still good, but I do, I, I just want more. I want more. I can't help it. Um, so I'm going to put Celeste in S um, because she's hot. Um, but I would, she'll probably be at the lower end of S because she, her hotness can only care, carry her so much. Um, if you're hot and have a good personality, like I, I have more information on your background, you're going to go, you're going to go higher. Uh, that's just, that's just the way my brain works. Um, cause like she's not a Nightwing or she's not another like participant of the rights. So her story information is a little bit lower. We don't like know why she's here. We don't know if she's done something bad or if she's here for a good reason. Is she something that she wants? We're not so sure. Um, which is what you get with almost every single other character, even the the rivals like Sir Deluge or something like that, you at least know why he's there. Um, and that is fun. And it, 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 it gives him a little bit more depth. Uh, all right, Falcon Ron um, and his dad. Uh, uh, again, a good father, son, Rome uh, relationship, I guess. Uh, it's not nearly as deep as Almer's and Dalbert's, so it's not going to be as high. Um, they're a little cheap, but they are funny, and I'll give them that. Um, but we don't know, like, why they're here, um, what they're going to do. Like, we get a little bit of information in the epilogue about what happens to them, at least in our playthrough, that they're going to have a nice, like, mercantile business with Rookie and Bertrude, which is pretty sweet. Um, but they do kind of just exist as shop characters with a lot of fun flavor. Um, so I think that puts them in a solid beat. Excuse me. Next, uh, Gilman. I freaking love Gilman. He's so much fun. He's got a really good character arc um, that I'm a big fan of. Uh, if you watch the playthrough, uh, throughout the whole thing, I've, uh, every single time he started talking about honor, I, I made comments about how he has to be more than that. He has got to be bigger than his honor. Um, and he's got to find his uh, kind of calling and his value and his worth um, and something else. And at the end of the story, at least in our story, he did. And I thought that was a great, um, a great little arc uh, character growth for him. Um, he's adorable. He's got one of the best sprites in the game, which is his big heart eye. Um, that's probably one of my favorite things in the entire game. I love it so much. Um, and he's, f he's just got fun energy. Uh, and he's fun. And he's fun to voice. So he's he's S. Uh, Headwind. Is there another? Okay, this is a better shot of Headwind. And this is actually a better shot of Gilman. I'm gonna use that one. Uh, Headwind. One of the first Nightwings we meet. Um, and I think he he suffers a little bit, mostly because he's pretty 
I'm not going to say stale, uh, but he's a little normal. Um, throughout our journey, we meet demons, we meet cute little imps, we meet dog people, we meet talking trees and fish and all this other stuff. And Hedwin's, you know, a guy. Um, and that's not to say his character is weak, because his character is really good. Um, but visually, he does kind of fall behind. Um, especially if you're, if you have a, a huge cast, um, he needs a little bit more. Um, so his design, pretty strong. He's still hot. Um, so let's talk about his, his story. Um, he was labeled a deserter, um, cast into exile. Uh, I love that he's got a really strong relationship with Jody, kind of like a little brother, big sister kind of vibe, which is awesome. Um, I like that it's a relationship that isn't romantic, um, that it's just a good male to female relationship that doesn't revolve around sex um, or sexual attraction. Um, his reason for the exile is really good. He was on the blood border. He was a soldier, like a lookout uh, scout kind of guy, um, and met with the enemy. Uh, Fakani, who is not on here, we don't really get a lot of information on her, uh, but she's a harp, like Pamatha and Tamatha, uh, and they start a relationship, which is really sweet. Um, love can bloom on the battlefield, and uh, that a relationship is really sweet. It shows a lot about kind of like our society right now. If you actually meet and talk to the people who you're told to hate and start seeing them as human beings and as real people, um, big surprise, you start seeing them as real people and that hate kind of can go away. So we don't know exactly what he felt about the harps initially, um, but I guess it wasn't strong enough to outright kill her when when they met, so that's really good. Um, so, during one of their meetups, uh, he was not there to spy an attack from the High Wing Remnant, um, and a whole bunch of people died, so he got cast down for exile. Um, and in our ending, he did get to meet with Fakani again, which was really special, really beautiful. Um, I really, really like him. I don't know if I'll put him in S tier, um, but I kind of want to because he's got a good he's got a good story, uh, but his design needs a little bit a little bit of something. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna put him in A, but that can easily change, easily change. Okay, ooh, one of my favorites, uh, Manly Tindostaff. Excellent character. He is so lovable, so hateable. Um. You get exactly who he is from the moment he shows up. It's peak character design. Um, the way that he is drawn, the way he's designed, the way that he's written. You know exactly what kind of person he is. Um, and even though he doesn't have a bunch of depth, he's just so much fun. I, I, whenever it was an opportunity to meet him, um, I was happy. Because he's just so silly. Um... And I think that's one thing that um, a weaker character can get pushed up for. Like, if they don't have a bunch of background, um, at least making them silly and fun to interact with does raise them up a lot, um, which is what kind of changes him from, like, a Falcon Ron or something. Because um, his, his character is, a, like, not super flat, but it's not as rounded as it could be. Um, but he's just so much fun to interact with. Uh, so he was uh, the son of a diplomat, I think. Um, so he got he, he's a Nepo baby, Nepo sapling. Um, and he just did nothing with his time. Uh, he, he just learned how to just not do work and get paid um, for being alive, I guess. Um, which is relevant. I'm sure there are a lot of people like that in real life where they kind of just get a, uh, get a position because of who they know or who their parents are. Um, and then they just kind of coast on that, uh, rest on those laurels, rest on the familiarity or the relationship aspect, um, and don't do any work. But at least, you know, I'll give the Commonwealth this, um, despite their multitude of absolutely asinine takes, um, they did exile them, which might not be the 
perfect response to his lack of work. Um, but they did call him out on his lack of work, um, which I do appreciate. So now he's trying to get back. Um, he's going to use any methods possible in our ending. Uh, he proved to be pretty inventive because uh, we didn't have the chance to bring him back. Um, and that's that's one of my biggest regrets. One of my biggest failures is that Manly, Manly didn't go back. Because uh, I would love to see what happened. Uh, but he tries a whole bunch of ways, um, very inventive, uh, to get back to the, uh, the Commonwealth, um, or the Saurian Union at that point, uh, but it doesn't stick. Uh, so I hope he finds, he finds, you know, some fun somewhere else. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put him in S, because I just, I love him. I, I don't know what else to say, I just love him. I think, in real life, if I met him... And if I had to work with him. Yes. See, he is kind of he is kind of like that. Um, he is a bit like Trump. Uh, are people within that circle. The difference is he's hilarious. And he's fancy. Like mainly mainly Tinderstaff is not eating ketchup. He's not going to Burger King. He's 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 doing the right he's at least being a fancy boy. And the aesthetic of it, hysterical. Um, I mean, he's he's kind of attractive for for a tree. Um, I didn't know I'd have to say that in my life, but if forced to say if a tree is hot or not, he's a hot tree. Um, which one cannot say about the fat tub of Cheeto dusted lard that used to be our president? Um, also, Trump, while while funny in his absolute insanity and like idiocy, uh, his idiocy has consequences um, and ramifications in the real world, and those things are based off of hate. Uh, I don't think Man Manly like actually hates anyone. Uh, he never ex expressed any like racist shit. Um. Uh, he, at the very least, he probably made fun of people for being poor, which I also don't like, but he's funny. <laughs> and I know that's, uh, that's a really poor reasoning in some cases, but he's, he's just funny. Um, and, uh, th that's really all I got for him. I, I, I do enjoy him. Yeah, thank you. I, I am trying to be a little more nuanced, um, because superficially, um, just like on the on the thinnest layer on top, yeah, he he's a corrupt politician, which is something that I hate. Um, but I think there are extenuating circumstances that make it okay. Uh, one that this is a video game. I think that's a big one, um, and I don't actually have to like live under his representation. Um, yeah, okay. Uh, I'm glad we're in agreement. Um, and vote, vo We'll get to Volfred. Don't don't you worry about that. Um, Ignatius, uh, we only met him for a little bit um, in the beginning of the game because we only had one right against him. It was the first liberation right, and then he was gone, um, which is sad. Um, in my first playthrough, so I am going to go a little bit back outside of our, our stream playthrough, um, I won the first liberation right because I was trying to win. Um, I think I let Rookie go. Um, so I actually got more time with Ignatius. And I ended up really liking him a lot, a lot more than I thought I would. Because um, at first, he's kind of just like a, a big tough guy, um, lots of tattoos, uh, a little arrogant, a little cocky. Um, but even within the first Liberation Rite that you meet him, he is uh, a little vulnerable. You can read his mind for just a little bit. Um, and he's nervous, he's scared, he's anxious, which are things that I totally... Uh, can relate with. I feel those things um, somehow before I wake up. Before my mind uh, comes out of the sleepiness, my mind is already filled with the chemicals for those things. Um, so I relate with him for that. Um, the more you uh, talk with him uh, later in the game, he and Jody have a really nice relationship in a way. Um, I don't think anything necessarily comes of it. But he does open up to her and become a little more sensitive, which I appreciate. Um, and seems to be looking for companionship, like he's lonely. 
um, which can lead to bad things. Obviously, lonely guys uh, can do some terrible shit. Um, but I think he shows enough vulnerability um, and like compassion and interest in her as a person and as like a, an equal uh, that I think it's kind of sweet. Um, it's not just like an obsession that he has, which it could easily be written like that if if this were taken in another direction or if it was written by people who uh, I don't know what they're doing. Uh, but I think they handle Ignatius well. Um, he's a good guy. I think in his backstory, he's uh, he got thrown into exile because he was a bouncer for a less than honest uh, club for rich people. Um, and someone was doing some unscrupulous shit that he didn't agree with, and I think he, like, beat the shit out of him. Um, so he's got morals. I'll give him that. Um, and he's willing to do some shit to the people who he doesn't agree with. Um, so he does have a sense of justice. I agree with that. Um, but we didn't get a lot of them. I would be interested to see what could happen between the two of them if they both went free or if they, or if him and Jody both, um, got their freedom. Um... I think that could be really interesting. Uh, I am going to put him in A. He does have a great piece of hair. He's got he's got a nice do. You are 100% right. Uh, 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 and I've mentioned it before. I'm a, I'm a sucker for big person, big tough guy, uh, sensitive vulnerability on the inside. Uh, it's a great um, kind of character trait of strong but vulnerable um, tough but compassionate, um, str- uh, like intimidating but to protect kind of thing, um, which actually I think leads us perfectly into Jody. Um, Jody is S tier. Um, I'll put her down here. I'll do a I'll do an N S ranking later. Jody is S tier. I love Jody so much um, for the reasons I just mentioned about being tough but being very caring. Um, that's one of my favorite tropes is tough, but uh, caring about others and using that to protect people and keep people safe and to love them. I think that's a great way to show strength, um, which is often like a masculine thing, but I think it's really nice that they put those traits onto Jody too. Um, some of the reasons she's an S, one, she's hot. Uh, you know, I just want to get that out of the way. She's she's a, she's a dommy mommy, and I appreciate that for uh, for everything that that brings to the table. Uh, other reasons, a uh, little deeper reasons, a little more complex, nuanced reasons. Um, her relationship with Hedwin, which I mentioned before, like a big brother, or little brother, big sister kind of thing, super sweet. Um, her relationship with Kay um, that we had in our game was incredible. Um, just that love and respect for a child who's gone through so much and to just want to be there for that person and to help them and support them. That's what true strength is, and I think that's Jody's like, biggest strength, is that she does care about people and, and just wants to keep them safe. Um, and then her relationship with Pamitha uh, was really, really good, too. Um, Jody was on the blood border. She got exiled for refusing to um, kill... Uh, prisoners of war from the high wing remnants um, so she's got she's got morals she's got conviction which is hot um, very good love to see it um, so they exiled her for uh, like treason uh, not doing what she was told um, so she's she's not a typical soldier where they just you know listen to their orders and do what needs to be done she's willing to break um, uh, break the rules given to her the orders and do what she thinks is right even if it means getting sent to exile forever uh, she does still harbor a lot of ill will towards the harps we see that a lot in the game um, and despite her racism I'm gonna you know, I'm gonna call it racism uh, despite her racism she never hurts any of the harps that we ever see she never outright attacks anyone whether it's Tamitha or Pamitha um, and she ends up having a really good relationship with Pamitha. If you continue to talk to them, uh, they learn to kind of reconcile a little bit, learn to trust each other in the rights, and agree that 
like their failures or their winnings it's not the other person's fault um, and that they need to spend more time together uh, which is an excellent showing of again what it's like to open yourself up to look at the people that you're told to hate and uh, see that, that see them as real people um, and Jody is willing to do that willing to put in that work um, and have a trusting relationship with a person she was told to hate uh, in, in, in an environment where her life is on the line. So she trusts Pamitha enough that her fr uh, to give her her freedom, or to trust her with her freedom. So Jody is great. I love Jody. I think I, I talked a long time about Jody. Uh, and she's just so tough. Like she could, I feel like Jody would dom you, but would be extremely kind about it and would would honor the safe words and you could have a real conversation about it like this is what i'm into this is how far i'm willing to go and i think jody would do that for you and 100 percent honor every single part of it she she would be probably the best dommy um she she's a good mommy she's an ooh mommy because she's so damn savory uh okay um, probably my least favorite character, Lindell, or Lindell, I don't know how to pronounce it, don't care enough to look it up. He's deep. Uh, he's a piece of shit. He's trash. Uh, he's a corrupt cop who was, uh, caught, I think, planting drugs or planting weapons in an innocent person's, uh, belongings. Uh, so he's, he's, he's a garbage person. Um... He hates Tizo, so he's he's a dick. Um, anybody who hates Tizo, um, that's instant D, instant D tier. Uh, there's no coming back from that. Uh, the, I know the whole story is about like coming back and coming back a better person, uh, but I don't know if there's any coming back from hating Tizo. I think that's a point of no return. Yeah, and his pillows suck. That guy doesn't. That guy's never seen sleep. Look at that fucking face. He has never had a good night's sleep. I don't trust him with my pillows. I, I just don't. I don't trust him with anything. Um, he is persistent. I'll give him that. Uh, he's stubborn. Uh, but you know that's about it. He's a he's a crooked cop, and I'm sure if we gave him his freedom, uh, he would continue to be a crooked cop. Uh, feel free to uh, let him free on one of your round. Uh, you know, if you decide to do a, uh, a playthrough of this, see what happens. Because uh, I think it was him and Manly that I didn't get a chance to let out. So I am curious to see what happens if they go free. Um, but I think he's one of the only people who, like, truly doesn't doesn't deserve it. Oh, this is the acoustic version of Barker's theme. This sounds this, this sounds really funny. Um, yeah, Lindell sucks. Fuck him. Um, I've said much worse about him in the uh, in the game. Um, that I should make like a little mini compilation. There's like a 10 minute rant from the shit I've said about Lindell in the games. Uh, next is Vol uh, Orlek. Excuse me. Orlek is S tier. Easy. Easy S tier. I'm going to get the better picture of him. Orlek is S tier. Uh, he was robbed of his... Um, First, uh, first freedom, his first liberation. Um, he took it bad. He took it pretty poorly. You know, I'll give it to him. Uh, that he deserved to be taken poorly. Um, it was not a great situation. Um, he was a doctor, a battlefield medic, but he couldn't stand it anymore. Um, I think he was kind of like Jody, where he refused to um, uh, to work in the environment anymore, and they got him for insubordination or whatever yeah he's top uh not only is he top s um he could top my ass um he's just hot he's just a hot demon the horns really work um he's got a good bod he's got a good mind um and then if you decide to give him his freedom at the end um he you know he's kind of willing to give it to you um so he's sweet but he will give it like he will take his freedom if you give it back to him which during uh, our playthrough uh terrifying i was so scared that he wouldn't go free he deserves it almost more than anybody because he was almost robbed twice um then when he is back free 
he continues to help people. He goes back and opens up like a little medic thing, healing anybody he can during the big uh, revolt that occurred in our playthrough. Um, so he's a top character. He's he's great. He's bitter, um, which makes sense. He's hesitant to help Volfred in his plan, but when he gets back up there uh, and, and sees the situation that's still going on in the Commonwealth, he he understands like Volfred's mo motives, why he was doing what he was doing. Um, yeah, he he's S tier. He's S tier. All right, uh, Rookie. Oh, I love Rookie so much. Uh, Rookie is also S tier. Um, he's cute. He's adorable. He's got a great mustache. Um, he talks fun. He, he's got a fun little uh, little accent on him. He's he's funny. He's always got something clever to say. Um, and he loves his mom. He's a mama's boy in a in a, in a great little way. Um, he he made a bad deal with Barker. He got sent down uh, for selling contraband uh, because he he loved his mom. He wasn't uh, the business wasn't making enough money, so he he did some unscrupulous stuff, um, selling things to the downside, I believe. So. Uh, whether his motives for that were to help people that were exiled or not, or if it was just for the money, uh, he was still willing to give people stuff in the exile. Um, so I'll give him I'll, I'll give him points for that. I'm gonna take him. I, I'm gonna assume the best of him. I'm gonna give him the benefit of the doubt that he was doing, like, the right caring thing. Um, he cares about his mom, um, even if he stays in in the downside. Uh, he's got that great entrepreneurial uh, mercantile spirit, um, doesn't give up, and uh, sends money back up to his, his mom, willing to uh, take risks with Barker to get the, the debt that he owes um, canceled to save his mom. Uh, all around, all around good boy. All around good boy. He deserves scritches. Uh, he deserves pats. He deserves treats. He deserves a nice pillow to lay upon. Uh, Rookie is awesome. Rookie's awesome. He also has a good relationship with uh, with Gilman. I think they have a cute relationship, uh, like a little friendly brotherly rivalry, which I which I appreciate. Uh, let's see, Sandra. I love Sandra. Uh, I think Sandra is possibly S, maybe A. I'm gonna say S. Um, you don't get a lot of her. I mean, she's technically a character that you can completely avoid. You do not need to interact with her at all, um, which might be really interesting. What happens if you never interact with Sandra? I think you're you're probably forced to interact with her once, just like during her inter introduction, and you can learn more and more about her, but it's completely optional. You don't have to go into the Beyonder Crystal to talk to her. You don't have to ask her how she's doing. You could probably ignore her and just do like the challenges to get the talismans. I wonder how that would change the game. Um, uh, she starts off as a pretty hard soon. Uh, very, very dry, very cold, dark sense of humor, which is attractive. Um, little, uh, again, a little embittered by her circumstances. Uh, she's been entrapped, imprisoned. Uh, for, you know, 800 years, I think. Uh, so, pretty rough. Uh, so, I can understand how that would be... Th the tedium would, would kind of drive you to uh, dark places. Your life would be unfulfilled. Uh, if you'd, Yeah, exactly. I don't know how I would live my life without Sandra. Um, so, I, she was sent in exile for the attempted assassination um, of... The Emperor Solium Mur, uh, when he was down the downside, or before he got to the downside, I think. I don't remember. I, timeline's fuzzy on me. I'll, for me, I'll admit. Um, and then this was her punishment. Uh, even though I believe she was hired by Solium's traitorous uh, advisor, it's always it's always the traitorous advisor. We've seen it a thousand times. We've got our worm tongues. We've got our Jafars. Um, they're dicks. Uh, and then they're going to double cross the people that they use um, so Sandra got a rough end of the stick but the more you talk with her she opens up she she appreciates your time 
She appreciates um, the companionship. Um, again, a relationship that doesn't have to be sexual. Um, it's never stated anywhere uh, about like attractiveness or um, anything like that, uh, which I appreciate. Again, solid relationship building from Supergiant. Uh, it doesn't have to be sexy. Uh, it's just sexy because I'm a pervert. Um, I could belong in horny jail. Uh, but I love Sandra. She softens up a lot and opens up to you. You peel back the crunchy uh, bastard coating around her in the scrubs way and find the nice center of, of a person who's suffering and who's had it rough and who wants to talk to somebody and uh, desires companionship, to, desires friendship. Um, and that's awesome. We love Sandra here. Sir Deluge, um, a hysterical character. He's super funny. Um, also pretty relevant to, like, real life, even if it's about, like, his circumstances are, like, in the military. We've all met somebody who, who does nothing and gets promoted based off of bullshit reasons, um, and they're completely incompetent. And they do nothing with their work, and yet somehow continue to rise the ranks. Um, so you're forced under um, the authority of someone who, who hasn't earned it and doesn't know what they're doing. Um, so you really feel for Sir Gilman when he's underneath Sir Deluge. Um, that being said, Sir, Sir Deluge is pretty funny. He's not as funny, funny as Sir Manly. <laughs> yes, uh, like Captain Stanley from... Uh, from Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Completely incompetent, but you kind of love him because he's an idiot. Um, again, if they wrote him more like Lindell, where he is just like a hate, spite-filled, festering puss sack on, like, right on that, right on the asshole, uh, you would hate him. But he is really, he, he's, he's funny, and I think he's actually a victim of, of circumstance. He's a victim of his culture, um, the worm culture is highly um, combative and uh, competitive. He had no choice but to really join the military. Um, in our ending, he becomes an author, which seems more like his calling, and actually um, treated Sir Gilman really well in the book. Like, he could have easily have painted Sir Gilman poorly, um, but he understood his own faults and understood, like, what what was going on with Sir Gilman and like owned up to his own bullshit um, he didn't want to be a fighter he was forced into that life based off of the culture that he came from um, so he is a victim of that so he gets a little more sympathy from me for that uh, and then he's just funny He he's, he's a coward um, and so many of the other characters talk really good shit on you um, they, they call you all kinds of names and it hurts, but Sir Gilman will just call you stupid and tell you to shut up and then go cry and run away. Um, so I appreciate him for, le for that. He's a good humor character. He's, he's kind of like Manly, but not, he's not as funny. He is, he is deeper though. He is deeper than Manly and I will give him extra points for that. He is a deeper, more complex character than Manly. Oh, hey, Chef Ray. You you know you know our you know I'm horny you know I'm horny for horns and you know they an S rank, Chef Ray. You absolutely know that. They're there, uh, and what I wouldn't give to be stuck between them, if you know what I mean. Uh, all right, so Sardu's Tamitha. Oh, again, we've we've been over this. We've been over this. I'm a horny boy. Did I miss Tamitha? Did, I, did somehow Vamp Pamitha get skipped? I think I accidentally skipped Pamitha. Uh, that's going to be remedied right away. Tamitha, you can wait. Pamitha is rest rank. She's hot. She made me realize things about myself. Uh, she cares a lot about her sister. Uh, willing, willing to get herself exiled for that. Um, possibly not a great communicator at first. She does do... Uh, she hides a little bit behind her, her sexy talk. Um, uh, but she is deeper than that. Uh, she does learn to communicate a little bit better. Um, she wants to have those conversations with her sister, but can't 
Um, so she does hide behind that, like her 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 bravado, uh, just a bit. Um, but damn it, she hot. Um, I want to build a nest with her. I've said it multiple times. Um, she has normal legs. We saw in the artwork at the end of the game, she has normal legs. She doesn't have like talons, uh, which is fine by me. Um, if feet are your thing, you can still get normal feet picks from from a harp. And if that's your kink, uh, you're in good you're in good feather wingy hand wings. Um, I've got questions about how they put on their clothes um, and stuff like that. How do they wash? Do they have like bird baths? Nobody knows. Um, but she's hot. Uh, she's got. A strained relationship with her sister, but one that she's trying to fix, um, and puts her sister above anybody. Uh, and then after after that, she does devote herself to the cause. Uh, and what I mean, just what else can I say about Pamitha? I just I don't know what else to say. She's hot, and, and I like her a lot. All right, now now we'll go to Tamitha. Tamitha also hot, po possibly hotter than Pamitha. Tamitha, I think. Physically, from a purely aesthetic point of view, uh, does more for me. Um, the hair and the eyes, the lipstick, it works for me. The uh, the aggressiveness uh, can be hot, but unlike what I said about Jody, where Jody would like honor the safe words and stuff, I think P Tamitha might take it a little too far. I think she might. Uh, get a little too into it um, and, and that could cause some distrust um, some some lack of trust between the companionship uh, so you would need to break through that and make sure you can have an honest conversation about what what both parties want um, she's stubborn uh, unwilling to to give her sister a chance which makes sense um, what's up Mason I hope you're. I hope. I hope everybody's listening, um, and can totally, uh, totally agree with me on all my uh, my based takes, my based kinks. Uh, what was I saying? Oh uh, yeah, she's stubborn, uh, but I think she does need. She d she does need someone to talk to. So, maybe with some therapy, uh, I think she could be okay. I think with some some good couples therapy, some couple counseling, some family counseling, I think I think it'll be all right. She's been through a lot. She's got some she's got some chips on her wings uh, for good reason. She was sent by a, to exile not by her own choice, um, but by her sisters and by the people who she was fighting against. So a pretty pretty shit deal. Thank you for your time, Mama. I I enjoyed having you here with your commentary. It means a lot. Uh, thank you for watching the rest of it later. That's so cool. Um, sure thing. I'll see you later. Uh, enjoy work. Um, be safe. Don't don't let them don't let them push you around. You are appreciated. Uh, I think that's all I got to say about Tamitha. She hot. Uh, I'll, you know, I'll just say that again because it bears repeating. Uh, Tizo. Tizo is S rank. Tizo is S rank. He's cute. He's adorable. Um, he's trying to live up to the expectations of being a descendant of one, a literal descendant of one of the scribes. Um, I don't know if anybody else uh, has that particular um, like lineage to live up to. He's adorable. He's sweet. Um, when he gets mad, he speaks. He he says imp profanity, which I just have to know what that is. Um, he makes Lindell mad, uh, so instant points there. Gotta love him. Um, he enjoys a good fish. Um, he works hard in the rights. He's very sweet. He's he's a good balance of like cocky and fun, but you know, just like a just like a person, uh, he feels moments of self doubt, um, and he makes good relationships. He's got a good relationship with Tariq, good relationship with Kay. Um, so we love Tizo. We uh, we simp for Tizo in a a way that you that one would simp for for a a, a pet, I guess. 
but that makes him seem lesser. He, he's not. He's not a pet. He is a. He is a person, and we love him. Get some water. All right. Um, oh, we missed Tariq. Uh, Tariq, I'm going to put in. Ooh, I'm going to put him in A. I think A feels a little bit better. Um, kind of like with Celeste, um, you don't get a lot of information about him. He is a bit of a mystery, wrapped in an enigma. Uh, but he's extremely supportive. He never like questions your judgment. Um, he trusts you to do the right thing no matter what. He's always there with some words of advice um, and some comfort to make you feel better when things go badly. He's a musician. He's got a good voice. He's pretty hot. He's not as hot as Celeste, but he's pretty hot. Um, he's working with Volfrid, though it's not quite clear if he's allowed to, um, because he does seem to be kind of like employed by the scribes. Um, you know what? I'm going to put him in S here. I'm going to put him in S here. You know, I just listed a lot of good things, and I think he is a step above um the, the A tier. Um, excellent voice. Uh, him and Celeste together. Interesting relationship. I wish we got more of it. Um, which I could say honestly about like basically anybody on this list is I wish there was I just wish there was more. And I guess the only way to get more is to play the game again. Which I might do sometime. I might just come back to this game every couple of years and just try something new. Uh, yeah, I think that's all I have to say about Tariq. Um, he's got a good relationship with Tizo, uh, good relationship with Volfred, good guy, good guy. Um, let's see, Udmilde, um, a little weaker, um, I don't think she's as strong as some of the other rivals you fight, um, she's no, she's not as funny as Mainly or, uh, Sir Deluge, she's not as hot uh, as Tamitha, she doesn't have any like super close ties to anybody other than Bertrude, but those ties are a little weaker. Um, they don't have like a personal history or anything. Um, so Admilde is a little lower. I do appreciate her her Lovecraftian stuff. That's pretty cool. Uh, but it doesn't seem to come to anything. And maybe that's for a reason. But she feels a lot less developed than some of the other ones. It's all Yeastlock Titans, Yeastlock Titans, blah, 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 blah. Um, on and on and on. She's got a good physical design. I, I like her design more than I like Bertrude's design. I will give her that. Between the two crones, I like her design more. Um, but her character is on the flatter end. Um, of the spectrum. So you know, I'm actually gonna I'm gonna make her my only C rank for right now. Ooh, we're almost done. Um, the Moon Touched Girl, or K in our case, um, she's S rank. She is so sweet, um, so innocent, um, kind of like that childlike wisdom, um, where like you talk to a kid and you're like, "Is this thing right or wrong?" And they're just like. Oh, you mean like hurting someone? Oh, that's bad. And it's like, yeah, okay, why Why are so many adults having trouble with this? Um, she is tenacious as all hell. Um, she struggled in exile. She struggled before she was exiled. She was exiled for a terrible reason, just because she was different. Um, she was moon-touched, um, which I guess is analogous to... Um, some form of neurodivergency. Um, so what the what the Commonwealth thought she was like broken or something. Um, obviously that's bullshit. She was just different, just like everybody else is different. Um, but she's extremely sweet. She's so caring. She's good with Tizo. Her big sister, little sister relationship with Jody, uh, and that hug they got at one point made me freaking cry. 
Um, like I still think about that. A very sweet. She doesn't let anything get her down. Um, she. I, I'd be interested to see what happens between her and Almer. Um, if both of them got out or if both of them stayed, I'd be really curious to see if her relationship ever sprouted there. She seems pretty upfront that she, you know, wants to be f friends with him. Uh, I don't think there's anything necessarily romantic there, which is fine. I've said it multiple times. Uh, relationships don't have to be based off of, um, like, purely sexual um boyfriend, girlfriend, lover type energies. I think having more platonic stuff is good. So even if it didn't become romantic, uh, I'd be interested to see what happens between those two. I think uh, she surprised Almer with her tenderness, with her caring. Um, and I think with more time, given his kind of jaded outlook, um, and because of how much he cares about his dad, I think given enough time to break that wall down and have a couple good conversations, I think they could become really close. Okay, last one. We've got Volfrid. Volfrid is S tier. Um, why he might not be as funny or he might not be as much of a fancy boy as Manly is. He is a revolutionary. He is a teacher. He is willing to um, break the rules to make sure um, the world is a better place. Um, he wants goodness for everybody, even people that aren't like him. He wants honor. He wants justice, true and true justice. He wants to punish and get rid of injustices. Uh, he's a promoter of reading. He spreads propaganda, which is awesome. Um, and the whole plan to revolutionize the area of the Commonwealth and use people's strengths to make the world a better place, even if he doesn't see it. Um, in both of my playthroughs, I think he, he always ended up staying in the downside. Um, so even though he's never gotten to see the true um, Saurian Union that he, he kind of envisions, he still fights for it, um, even though he's literally separated from it, um, which is the mark of a, a good progressive person. Um, wanting people to have a better life, even if that means that you are either dead and can't participate in it, or in Volfrid's case, he's physically separated and can't do it, but he cares enough about other people to make it happen. Um, I think that's it. Um, I think that's all the characters. I think we got everybody. I'm going to look through here and make sure we didn't miss anyone. I think that's it. We did it. Huzzah. Uh, so I'm going to go through the lists here and just put everybody in their in their order. Um, obviously, B, C, and D only got one person in each, so they can just stay like that. Uh, so let's go to A. How do I rank these characters? I think Hedwin is top A. Um, and I think his biggest weakness is I think he just needs a little bit more depth and a little bit more design. Um, like I would love if at one point he took off his headband and you got to see some horns starting to grow from him because we know humans given enough time in the downside will start to grow horns. I wonder if that's why he's wearing that headband. I'd love to see it. Maybe it's a hidden piece of, uh, dialogue, a hidden event that we just didn't get. Um, but like seeing him maybe like take off the headband and in the future, like kind of, not necessarily flaunt it, but, like, be proud of his exile. Um, I think that'd be really cool. I think he just needs just, like, a, 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 two, a little uchi bitch more. I don't know what those words are, but he just needs a tad bit more to bring him to S. Um, so I think he belongs top. Top A. Um, let's see. Um, I like Sir Deluge a lot. Um, mostly because of the victim of culture. Um, he's funny in an early funny way, like a, like a, like a cowardly way. He's, he's fun to talk to. Um, he, and he has growth. He does actually have character growth, um, where he, 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 re he respects Gilman, um, and he changes himself. He, he gets out of the military to do something that he loves. Um, 
and that kind of changes his life around. So I think he belongs a little higher um, between these guys. Um, Tamitha's big thing, like she's up here because she's hot. Um, so I think she belongs at the end. Um, Ignarius, I've mentioned multiple times that I that I really like the the trope of gentle giant. So I'm going to put him above Bertrude. Um, in our playthrough, we didn't see a bunch of them. Um, but I think if we were to have uh, interacted with him more, um, I feel like more people would have uh, seen why I put him in A. Uh, a lot of the stuff about Ignarius being up here is based off of my old playthrough. Okay, here we go. Ooh, I told you there was going to be a lot of S's. Uh, this is SSX tricky. I don't know. Yikes. Okay, uh, well, let's just go with what we know. Um, Pamitha is hot. Pamitha is hot. We love her. Um, Jody is incredible. She might be she might be my favorite character. Like I simp for Pamitha pretty hard, but a lot of that is her her design, um, and she talks really sexy to me, and and, and that does stuff for me. Um, but I think like as a whole, I think Jody might be my favorite character. Um, I'm not entirely sure. I could probably switch those two back and forth. I think they're more or less equal. More or less equal. Um, I'm going to keep... Elmer and Delbert are going to stay pretty high. Because um, I love the father-son dynamic. Um, but I do wish there was more. Um... I like them a little bit more than Barker. Um, Manly, Manly's pretty good. Okay, Orlek, Orlek goes up top. Orlek is top tier. Um, he stays up there where he belongs. Um, I think Volfrid, also pretty high up there. Tizo, high up there. Um, Celeste, she's hot, um, but she could use a little bit more. I'm going to put her next to Tariq. I'm going to put her a little bit above Tariq. Um, let's fill out the bottom. Uh, I think the weakest in this group, uh, the one that I just feel the least about, I mean, I love mainly a lot, but he is up here just because he's kind of silly and fun. Um, so I'll put him at the bottom. I'll put K um, probably next to, to them. I don't know. I like Gilman a lot. I'll put I'll put Gilman above. I'll put Rookie there. Um, Barker. I like Barker a lot. Um, I'll probably put him right there. Sandra. I'm gonna put Sandra. I think I'll keep Sandra right there. I'm gonna look it over and make sure I'm okay with all this. That's good. That's good. You know, those are givens. I think this is fair. Um, I think that feels pretty good. Yeah. Hmm. I think I'm gonna. Do I move Gilman up a little bit? I'm gonna move Gilman up a, just a little bit. Um. Keep them right there. Keep her him right there. Yeah. I think I like Sandra a little bit more than. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna put I'm gonna put her right there. Um, they can go right there. All right. I think this is good. I feel pretty good about this. Um, I w I would say this is definitive, but it could honestly change if I did another playthrough, um, or just if you caught me on a particularly horny morning. Uh, but I feel like this is pretty good. I think Jody might be my favorite character, but I think I think her and Pamitha are, are kind of tied. Um, I want to put these guys a little bit higher, but, uh, you know, because of the father-son thing, I think they're so sweet. Um, it does a lot for me. Uh, like, I, I would I would kill for just more time with, with their father-son relationship. Um, but given what, we, given what we have, you know, my biases are showing a lot because of them being up here, but uh, it's my list. 
uh, I feel like this is good. Um, if you like it, if you don't like it, you know, it's fucking whatever. Uh, that's the beauty of this stuff. That's the beauty of Pyre. Um, I'm pretty happy with it. 